you had the insight, you had adopted this current life as your own, meaning that you had accepted it, it has become now your identity. Therefore, because it's become a part of you and your identity, you started living out that life. And what do I mean by that? We look at, we identified that a lot of these eating habits that you had were the same eating habits that your dad had, right? That your mom had, which we've been talking about that a lot of the eating habits that we adopt are learned. We learn them from our upbringing, from our family, from our surroundings, from our environment, from our school, from our friends. All of those things influence how we develop a relationship with food, therefore adopting the habitual life. You are incredible. Your body has a purpose. Your life has a purpose. You were designed to live the best life possible. What's happening, everyone? I hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in to a brand new episode in a new week. You are tuned in to listen. You're not defeated. And I'm your host, David Hernandez. You know, this week was a rough week for me. I wasn't able to upload my episodes on Tuesday and Thursday like I had originally intended. You know, life happens. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, I've been getting some treatments done on my neck. Four years ago, I started to have some trouble with my neck and some nerve issues and nerve pains. And after four years, I finally got a diagnosis on it and I've been going through getting some treatments on it. So that backed me up. And then life, meaning marriage, is also happening. You know, I'm, I'm super blessed and happy to have found a, a wonderful woman that I love who's my fiance. And we will be getting married July 16th. And so these last couple of days and weeks have been in preparation towards that. We are less than a month away from our big day, a day where we can celebrate joining, coming together and just living and doing life together. Super excited and super fired up if you can already tell that. But, you know, it's, it's awesome. You know, I think even f being flexible, I know we, we set intentions and we kind of, um, uh, uh, schedule out things to happen and then sometimes things happen in life that cause you to have to become flexible and juggle things around to still make it happen so even though today's not Thursday when I was able to release the episode you are still getting a brand new episode this week and I'm just happy to be embracing this process of life look I think Every moment is an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to grow. It's an opportunity to um, learn more things about self, but also to be able to mature and to be able to um, grow in areas that will always make us a better person. I think in life, if we strive to become better each day and know that every situation that can come in our, our way is, is, is something that we can learn from, I think it just makes doing life a little bit more joyful. And like I said, I'm super happy to be able to start doing life with a powerful, amazing, incredible, talented, gifted, beautiful woman who um, will be having our wedding July 16th. So anyways, if you haven't already subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe. If you are uh, watching this on my channel, my YouTube channel, click the subscribe button. Also click the little bell so you can get all the notifications of our up and coming episodes. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast station, click the follow button so you don't miss an episode. This week is a follow up to a Facebook live that we did. Every Tuesday on Facebook, I've decided to go live with Allison Oswald, who you all are now very familiar with her. She's one of my students and clients that I've just had the privilege of coaching and incredible transformations with her life. She's just been a, a model student that has crushed it in very, very uh, short amount of time. And I'm just excited because when we started having a conversation and sharing, I was opening up my heart in terms of vision of, of what I'd like to produce and keep doing with um, my coaching. She just fell in love because she also has a heart to help empower other men and women. And because she's received so much insight and her life has changed with what I teach and how I, how I, um, just guide people through their health and fitness journey. She said, listen, is there any way I can be a part of this? And the funny thing was that before she opened up 
I had already been thinking about her because as I've been going through our sessions with her, I started to realize like how much passion for helping people she has. And I said, this would be a cool opportunity for us to merge. And well, what do you know? A couple of weeks now into this whole segment and we are every Tuesday doing a Facebook Live. If you want more information about that Facebook Live, look, look down there in the show notes. You can join us every Tuesday. It's free for you to come on, bring questions about health, about wellness, about fitness, about mindset, about emotional eating, stress eating, about how to lose weight, about how to just live your best life. You can bring your questions. I want to bring answers because even though there's a lot of information out there, it doesn't mean that that information really works if it's not information that impacts you directly, if it's not information that is specifically designed for you. And that is why every Tuesday we go on Facebook and just share some amazing content. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. We had a wonderful conversation. I really go down deep down into the psychological understanding of now how to take control of our habits to put an end to unhealthy eating habits. Anyway, so without further ado, let's jump on into today's episode and I will see you at the end. Stay tuned. Peace. Mic check. Mic sound okay? Camera one good. Camera two good. All right, here we go. What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday. We are back with another week, another live here for you all on Facebook, the community. We are so blessed to be joining again with you all, the audience, on another brand new week. A lot happened this weekend. We're excited to be connected. Allison, how you doing, girl? Pretty good. We're doing pretty good here. Just same old, same old, except for it's 100 degrees. That's crazy. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, Illinois yeah, you just, I know. mean, isn't it, it, it exciting? surprises me. It's exciting. <laughs> I mean, you can call it exciting. I call it freaking weird. I mean, I, I don't know. I prefer to have less excitement. <laughs> yes, everyone's like, okay, we're glad it's summer, but where is just eight? That's so, crazy. yeah, it was, it's like a hundred degrees for the next three days and then next week it'll go back to normal. So, but that's, that's yeah, that's, that's a little wild to go out there and just be like, yeah, I mean, a cause by that. you go from like what, six, six yes. months, seven, eight months of like extremely cold oh. to then like, okay, let's just go to the other extreme a yeah, hundred degree have, weather. Yeah, exactly. And like, you have a little bit of time in there where it seems like, oh yeah, it's in the seventies. It's going to be nice. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, what am I looking at next week? What, what's yeah. happening? So that's yeah, crazy. that's that's pretty much what's going on here. We're getting ready for Father's Day is coming up this weekend. I know it's so uh, fast, right? Like I we're know. already heading into July. We're you know? excited too. Like my fiance and I, our wedding is coming up in less than, or about Exciting. 32 days. Oh, it's awesome. crazy. So we've been ram running around um, so with excited. that, getting all the details and um, it's been fun to be able to share that with you and all my friends here that have been joining. An exciting and, time. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, more than anything, I think um, the excitement is the eagerness to just like do okay. life together. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. 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 We, sure. we mesh so well in so many different ways. It's just so funny how um, when things work and God does his thing, he, it just like, it just meshes, right? We're not perfect by any no, means but we not. have that strengths that strengthen and like right. we we are able that's to embrace make a each good other couple. that's yeah. right yeah. yeah that's awesome that's cool I'm so excited that's for cool you. we had our first yeah. sleep to better health conference this yes. weekend yes friday and saturday and it was incredible like awesome. i posted a couple of days ago or yesterday on just the joy and the gratitude that i felt because since 2019, I had created, I'd gotten this vision, this idea of creating a conference, right? A mm -hmm. place where people can come, a safe place that they could mm -hmm. um, all come with the same focus, right? The same desire, the same passion to learn how to identify the real causes, right? The real things that are making men and women be stuck and being overweight, unhealthy, yeah. right? That just not being able to break that cycle because yeah. look, I mean, there was a poll that CNBC did and they discovered that 88% of Americans, I mean, all suffered with poor eating habits, right? Hmm. Yeah. And that's shocking to me. And it was 
in this in this envisioning of this conference or of this uh, two day three day setting, it was let's create a place that they can come and they can get the answers that they need that is going to impact and change their life for good, right? Yeah. It's not about selling a product, not about selling a supplement, not about selling a potion, not about selling anything that would give them only temporary results, but like really teaching the fundamentals, right? That I've learned through my 15 years in the industry that will cause that shift to happen. Because yeah. it's really about that. It it's is. about identifying what is causing me to stay stuck in these habits and this un and these un unhealthy habits, right? And these destructive habits, or causing me to just stay stuck in this pattern of life that might be obesity, right? That might be just being overweight, unhealthy, unconfident, uh, no energy, whatever that is, and where people can come and get that insight and take it with them immediately. Mm -hmm. And it transformed their life. That's awesome. And we did it. That's great. Freaking That's did great. it. I um, know. It's just, just you were preparing for it and it's an exciting thing. And then it's like, but then it happens. And then you can kind of look back and think, this is what I was working towards. Like, this yeah. is what I want to do. Like, I want to share this with people, you totally. know, and, and to be able to, to have um, the ability to do that, I think is amazing. When you envision something, you work hard, you persevere, you like put in long hours and you just keep striving for that. And then you see it come true. Like yeah. that dream comes true. It is so gratifying. I was in such a joy. Um, yeah. You know, there was a moment of all emotions everywhere. I broke down. I was excited. Yeah. I was shouting yeah. in joy. Right. And just seeing it come together, it being the first one of many to come, right? Yeah. Because we're, we're, we're obviously now the idea behind this, and we've talked about it, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to share this with the audience. We haven't mm -hmm. publicly shared it, but the idea is to start making these as often as possible, you yeah. know, every quarter to start, and then possibly every two months, every month or so, but travel different states yeah. and different cities. Yeah. And we are talking about next year, right? Mm -hmm. Possibly mm -hmm. in Illinois, either possibly April or March, April or May, one of those months. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're going to be starting. I know we've already started the, the structuring and the, the, the working on the marketing side of things for that to make it happen. And I'm just eager. I'm just super yeah. excited and pumped to share this information with everyone because it's life-changing. Look, you're Excellent. a product of that. Definitely. Definitely. And it's funny because it's like the more that we, um, talk about some of the things that I've gone through or that, you know, I, I keep realizing like, and I'm still doing it and I'm yeah. still doing it, That's you know, right. where, where before it would be like, okay, when, when is, you know, when's the other shoe going to drop? Like, when is this yeah. going to stop working? When am I not going to be able to keep up juggling all these crazy yeah. things that I'm doing or, you or know, unrealistic yes. things that you are forced to do with, with again. other things, yeah. right? Yeah. Like yeah. when, and when's this going to go back again? And, and, and all the while I keep thinking to myself, Hmm, I'm not thinking like that. Like I'm not feeling those same type of feelings and same type of setbacks. So yeah. I think that that's something that is important to me that I feel like I, I want to share because I'm still working, you know, like I'm still doing this every day. That's right. Um, but the more I do it, the more I'm able to kind of reflect on it and, and realize I'm living it. That's right. And, and yeah. I've never had that before. And that is something so profound and so important and powerful because it's about making a lifestyle change. We right. start to hear it now everywhere, right? I've been talking about this for 15 years about yeah. the importance of making that change, but it's how do we do the change if we're trying to do something that is not addressing the root of what is causing me to stay stuck in this current life, right? right? Right. So if we want to adopt whatever that life is for you, maybe you want to be healthy, fit, strong, confident, have be full of energy, spend time with your kids, play with your kids, right? Travel, have adventures. I mean, I don't know. What is that life for you? In yeah. order to do that, we have to change your identity. Your identity has to change. As a person, you have to change. Your habits have to change. Your mindset has to change. The way you process things have to change. Your, your beliefs about yourself has to change. But more yeah. importantly, addressing what 
is causing me to stay stuck in this life that I no longer want to live. Because when you address that and you change that, look, change is inevitable. Right. Right. But not only is change inevitable, but you're able to sustain it. Why? Because now it becomes you. It's part of your life. That's your new level of standard, right? Yeah. And that's the difference. That's the difference between when they keep throwing around this, like it has to be a lifestyle change. Yes, it does. And, and, but they're just like, just on the surface when they say that, why they, I mean, all these other programs. Yeah. In general. Personally, I've tried. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like they're acknowledging the fact that something has to change, but what they're not acknowledging is what has to change is part of who you identify as. Mm, that's good. And, and, yeah. and I feel like that, that's something that I had never addressed before. And even when we started working together, like that was hard for me at first. Mm. Like I didn't want a yeah. quick fix, but I was kind of like, oh, I already know why I do this. Oh, I already know what's going on in my head. I just can't stop doing it. That's right. You know, and yeah. I didn't realize like there was more going on here tied into these behaviors and this relationship that I had with food being part of my identity. That's so good. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because that's exactly what I want to jump into in today's episode Mm -hmm. for the past two weeks, we've been talking about, well, is these things that I'm doing, right. Is me going to food to cope or to release my emotions or me going to food to, um, release my stress or my boredom. And realistically, all of that being unhealthy eating habits, the biggest question that that came out of that was, is that a psychological problem, right? Is that stem from some type of psychological issue? The answer was yes, we addressed that. The second answer was, well, then why can't I stop eating the foods I don't want to eat, right? And we addressed that last week. And today I want to now address with you, because Mm -hmm. you've gone through this process. For sure. We you're my student, we've worked together. And, and you saw something, I mean, incredible transformations in such a short period of time. And you've gone through the process of like, so how now do I start to work on this psychological issue to get to the change, right? Right. So I want to jump into that. But before I do, I just want to Um, Shout out anyone that is watching live tonight. If you are on live, drop in the comment section where you're watching from. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, every Tuesday we're coming live here on Facebook to support you, the community, to answer questions, to bring insight, to bring specific insight that is going to help you. Because look, there's information everywhere, but it doesn't mean that it's good information because if the information that you're getting isn't significant or specific to what you are needing, it's not going to be beneficial to you. And that's exactly why every Tuesday we come on live here on Facebook as a platform, as a community to support you, to encourage you, but to give you answers to the questions that you might be having. And um, so let us know in the comments section where you're watching from. And also, as we are moving forward with First Sleep to Better House and preparing the next coming events, let me know in the comments where you would want me to go to. What city, what state would you like me to go next to visit and to speak at? Because I'm starting to put together um, surveys and looking at what states would be the next best option for our event. So let me know in the comment section. Very well. So let's jump right in. Yeah. With your with your process. Okay. Mm -hmm. The the beauty of this is that the formula, so to speak, and the strategy right? And the, the technique that I put together here is, is beneficial for everyone and anyone struggling with unhealthy eating habits, right? With things that are um, destructive in terms of emotional eating, stress eating, or anything that you are doing that is leading you to go to food to find an answer, to find a release, to find some type of comfort, to find some type of answer. It works. And, and these are the leading causes that are producing 80% of obesity in America. And it would be 84 to 88%, right? Of obesity yeah. in America, which gives us an, it, it, it like shines a light on, on something there, right? It's saying, right. look, th- this is, this is something we should be addressing and that needs attention. Yeah. It's such a big problem yet. They just keep throwing all these, you know, quick fixes at it. And if these things were working, 
we yeah. wouldn't have such a high obesity rate. We wouldn't have all these people dying of secondary causes related to right. unhealthy, you know, weight, um, eating and, and, and stuff yeah. like that. Like we wouldn't have it if these things were working, but for some reason people just keep identifying the problem and just being like, well, that's a big problem. Yeah. But then <laughs> not Nothing's wanting to try to figure out what to do. That's what's so yeah. confusing to me now. Yeah. 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 And the biggest issue here is too, let's just say maybe you, you're not one of those 88% in the sense of that severe, right? But mm -hmm. many are still struggling while they live, right? They're living a less than, than, than um, sustainable life that you were designed to live, right? You are not living to your fullest. You may be um, dealing with self-confidence issues, low self-esteem, low energy, right? You're not really enjoying life to the fullest. Right, right. And that can become a long-term struggle, which can impact your kids, your relationships, your, your work life, right? Your, your family, all things. You might not even realize it. Yeah, you know, I did. Right. You know, I didn't. It's like I knew I was engaging in this behavior that I didn't like, and I knew I had some extra weight, and I didn't really like the way my clothes fit, and I yeah. wanted to be fitter, you know. But I didn't really like make that connection to the fact that it is part of my identity, you know, that relationship, and so it did. It, it did impact other things in my life, and then I started realizing, like, I'm not really happy with that. I'm not happy with the way I react. I'm not happy with. Um, some of those relationships and, and, and how I interact in those relationships. So you say identity, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that because I think you, you hit, you hit the, the, the head, the nail on the head with that or the head. I don't know the term, whatever. You got like. it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> but the nail. you, you the nailed it. It, yeah. it, it. It's just that because yeah. Early on, when we had our initial conversation, um, there was there was insight that you had about this topic, mm -hmm. right? But what what I recognized is that even though you had the insight, you had adopted this current life as your own, meaning that you had accepted it, it has become now your identity. Therefore, because it's become a part of you and your identity, you started living out that life. Yeah. And what do I mean by that? We look at we identified that a lot of these eating habits that you had were the same eating habits that your dad had right? That your mom had, mm -hmm. which we've been talking about that a lot of the eating habits that we adopt are learned. We right. learn them from our upbringing, from our family, from our surroundings, from our environment, from our school, from our friends, all of those things influence how we develop a relationship with food, therefore adopting the habitual life regarding food. Right. And the more that's introduced to us, it now also becomes habitual learning, which now is what makes it to become automatic. Mm -hmm. Our central neurological system becomes ingrained in that way. Our neurological connections become formed in that way, in this form of eating, in this form of relationship with food, in the choices of foods that you make, right? In how often you eat and how much you eat, right? Even portion sizes is influenced by what we learn and what we see. Yeah. And not, not just the behaviors, you know, but also like, this is making me think like, yes, the behaviors that became behaviors of my own, but also like when you said like the relationship with food. Yeah. Like I wasn't even really aware of those. I was aware of the habits themselves and maybe how they played a role, but really how those habits also formed my view of food wow, and that's the relationship great. with food. Cause that's, that's right. different. You know, yeah. like, you know what the habits are like, Oh, my dad binge ate. Oh, he went on yo-yo diets. Oh, he was always like, when are we going to eat? When are we going to eat? When are we going to eat? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. like I knew those, but I didn't really realize what those meant um, for me and, and how I also adopted that relationship with food as well. That's right. And that is the key right there. Because you adopted that relationship, meaning now your psychology of food what is our psychology of food, our understanding of food, the way we view food, the way we think of food, the way we feel towards food, right? The way we relate with food, right? Mm -hmm. 
the relationship is first formed in the sense of how it's introduced to us. Then we adopt the psychological understanding of food for us based on how that relationship of, with food was introduced to us. Mm -hmm. Then based on that psychological understanding is what you adopt as your identity, as your person. And when you adopt that person, you start to live out exactly what that person lives out. So right. if we break down that example, your father had you know, a specific relationship with food. Your mom had a specific relationship with food, right? Share a little bit about what their relationship with food was like, right? That you saw that, that then ultimately you also adopted. Cause then I want to break out something. I want to break down something else. Yeah. So, you know, my dad, um, I just have these memories of like food was just very important. Like mm. it was always not, not just that it was important and that we were going to, you know, um, go out to eat and have a good time, not that kind of thing, but like literally right. at every point in the day, my dad wanted to know like, when's the next meal going to be, when are we going to be eating? What are we going to be eating? When we go on vacation, when are we going to stop? You know? And it wasn't just cause yeah. he was hungry. It was like literally built his, his day around it. And, you know, I also remember like just a lot of like uncontrolled eating, like watching TV, like just yeah. second, you know, seconds, thirds, just tons and tons of kind of like overeating. Right. And then I also remember uh, growing up kind of these points where like he would go on these diets where he would just drink shakes mm -hmm. and they were yeah. like actual like hospital diets and wow. he would lose like a hundred pounds and it would be like a joke because we'd be making him shakes for all his meals. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, it, it, you don't yeah. know as a child that this is like kind of weird relationship, like it's just what you know. And then he would gain it all back plus some. Right. You know, and, and then ultimately, you know, when I was in grade school, he put himself into um, type two diabetes from this. And he was lucky enough that he didn't have to go on insulin. He was just on medicine, but he still really didn't take it seriously or control yeah. it. And then when he was in his fifties, finally, they said, you have to go on insulin. Your body is just, you know, and now your kidneys are shutting down. So he started wow. dialysis and he was on a transplant list. And then he just, we think he had a heart attack. Like he just I mean, kind of pretty much just dropped dead. Like, I mean, he yeah. wasn't, he wasn't super healthy, but he wasn't dying. So, right. um, and these were 100% related to, um, his eating habits and his nutrition. So, with you know, the, that, the overlying umbrella being his relationship with food. Yes. 100%. 100%. And so I, I saw that, you know, growing up, um, not only the actual habits, but, what he used food for right you know, i mean it was for comfort yeah. it was for distraction it was for celebrating it was for everything you know and, and um to the extreme yeah you know? yeah and then so then how did that impact your relationship with food share how was your your then um adopted relationship growing yeah. up yeah. Well, I mean, so, so for me, it was kind of like the same thing. Like, when are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? When are we going to go out to eat? Uh, you know, how much food am I going to have? Am I going to have dessert? I'm going to have dessert every night. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, what's for dessert? What's the sweet thing? What's the ice cream? What's that? You know, every single night. Right. And it was really important to my dad. So then I, sometimes we used it to like bond with each other, you know, and, and not that there's anything wrong with that. If no. you do it in a you moderately know, in a healthy time. way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was 100%. not in a healthy way. It was like, okay, yeah. what are we, where are we going to go out to eat? You know, what, what junk food are we going to get? What? Mm. And it was just always there, like always yeah. built in, you know, and we would kind of joke about it, but then in the end, it was obviously wasn't very funny because of yeah. what it did, you know, to him, but yeah. So, I mean, I definitely adopted that relationship, not only in, in the habits, but in the thought process. Now look at then the paradigm that then happens, right? This is the type of stuff we were analyzing yeah. in our coaching, right? Yeah. This is exactly what we started to reflect and started to break down because it's important to identify while well, what's going on. Yeah. What is causing me to be in this place? Mm -hmm. Right. And most all overeating Mm -hmm. stems from an unhealthy or a distorted relationship with food, right? Which then I can go on and say the statement that is a bold one, that obesity is learned. 100%. Now, 
when we look at this paradigm, your dad, that was his relationship with food, mm -hmm. what we just addressed, mm -hmm. which gave him what? An identity of that sort, meaning that's who he, 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 he was. Right. That's how I, that's how I live. That's how I do things. And everything in a certain way surrounded around that particular type of life, yeah. which then resulted in him living out exactly that life. Yeah. Unhealthy. He became overweight, diabetes, kidney failure, ultimately to the terrible place yeah. that we want to avoid. Right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. He messed up his heart. I mean, he had to have quadruple bypass like but also I mean, living living frustrated living yeah. depressed oh yeah no energy right oh 100 yeah he would sleep all the time he'd always try to find a reason to take a nap we he'd be like why is dad taking the nap again you yeah. know and now we would make fun of him because he was like oh geez but now i now i look and realize oh my god you know yeah. and by the time he was like the last maybe 10 years of his life he finally was like oh mm. oh shoot i don't want this anymore I don't want yeah. this anymore, yeah. but he couldn't change it. He would, again, he would try like, okay, I'm going to eat a little bit better. I'm going to do this, but he had, it'd been so many years That's right. and that relationship was so ingrained into his identity. He just wasn't able to ever really. Right. Correct it, fix it. But had we started working on his relationship with food yeah. to change his identity, there would have been hope. Right. But For now sure. let's look at the paradigm here with you. As you adopt that now, what then starts to happen with you, right? You adopted that relationship. You start to live out according to that psychological understanding of food, right? right. You, like you said a few minutes ago, you owned it. It became your identity. This yeah. is who I am. This is yeah. how I eat. This is how I think. This is how I view food. This is how I process food. This is how I relate with food. These are the choices that I make with food, right? These are the things that I go to when I'm feeling this way. It was all in that understanding of food. Yeah. So that became who you are. Yes. And then as a result of that, what happens? You start to live out that life. How were you living? Well, yeah, I was basically... My relationship with food is I use this to try to deal with when I feel really mad right. or annoyed or bored. Yeah. I go to this to try to make me feel better or more in control of my right. responses because I right. didn't like the way I was responding. Mm. Um, so yeah, not only was I not happy in my life, the way in which I was using food, yeah. Or, or, or eating food, which was ultimately what was relating to my weight gain, to my That's not right. my clothes, not like yeah. in the shape of my body. Like, cause I was exercising pretty active yeah. person, but that nutrition piece was just, even if I yeah. could hold it together for like a day or two, then it would always like, mm -hmm. you know, come back. So that's kind of like what I was dealing with on that front. But then also I look back and I, I know now, you know, when I came to you, I was just always exhausted never had an energy. That's it right there. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted to sleep. And, you know, I used to just relate it to be like, okay, well, maybe this is anxiety or this is some depression, which are two things that, you know, since my twenties, I've kind of, you know, gone back and forth in different periods of my life and learned some things about that. And I always was like, oh, well, here we go again. You know, th I, this is not in control. And then yeah. this is related to anxiety and depression and the overeating and this, and I was angry a lot. Yeah. You know, when I think to myself, why am I so angry? You know, why am right. I always yelling at my kids or worried about my mom and, and, and yelling at my brother, you know, and th this kind of stuff that, that was part of my life that I was not happy with, you know, when we're talking yeah. about where you want your life to be and right. where your life is. Right. But that's exactly what I meant when I asked, how was you? your life. You were living that out. You yes. were no energy. You were tired. You were always angry. Your emotions were all over the place. You were yes. overweight. You were unhealthy. You weren't yes. enjoying life. And when we look at that comparison, it's the exact same thing, very similar to your dad. Yes. And so that stems from, again, your life in all those areas were being impacted back to the root, your relationship with food, which then uh, uh, developed your psychological or your psychology of food, your understanding of food. Mm -hmm. This piece right here that we're, that we're breaking down is rudimentally important and foundational. 
That is why this is the first part that I start to break down with my students, with you in any, um, in, in the beginning of our coaching, because this we need to identify, right? I, I've put together what I call the, be, uh, the food behavior quadrant, and mm -hmm. it breaks it down into four specific areas. This is a four-step process that I use, right? right? To gain awareness, to get understanding, to look at what is causing me to be in the place that I'm at. Because if we don't address those things, we're going to always just keep doing that roller coaster, that yo-yo life, going up, going down, never gaining control of our right. life. Right. And this one that we're breaking down right now is step one. It is yeah. the first quadrant, which is identifying the root cause, mm -hmm. meaning where does all of this stem from? Where mm -hmm. does my unhealthy eating habits stem from, right? Where does my emotional eating, if you do emotionally eat, stem from? My stress eating, my boredom eating, right? Where do my food choices stem from? Where does all of this stem from? Because everything has a beginning. You are not just born with this. Right. You're not just born and come out of your womb genetically. And now you just, God says, okay, you're going to have a good relationship. You're going to have a bad relationship. You're right. going to have a mediocre relationship yeah. with food. Like that right. doesn't exist. Right. Right. That's a very good point. It's we all point. come out without any understanding it's of that blank, blank. Yeah. Right. It's a canvas. And through our developmental years on how we're raised, who we're raised with, what we're surrounded by, what is taught to us, what we observe, right? Mm -hmm. What is conditionally taught to us? What are we doing every single day in a habitual state? All of those forms are, are ways are, are the way we learn. They're forms of learning. Mm -hmm. And that is how we start to adopt and create our relationship with food. And, you know, I can, if this is helpful, I, I think this might be helpful for some people. My mom, uh, now that relationship was less obvious to me prior to working with you. Okay. Um, because, yeah. Because, because, um, and I'm hoping maybe some people can relate to this. So my mom was what I stereotypically now realize is not a stereotype because it's very much the way women um, either look at food or treat food or have a relationship with food where this is forbidden. This is bad. Mm, this, is, yeah. this is, I shouldn't be eating this. I'm yeah. bad. I can't control myself. Like never once did I ever hear my dad say the words mm. I shouldn't, but I want to <laughs> never, never. It may have yeah. been going on here. Now Probably. my mom, on the other hand, I want to eat those box of Twinkies and I deserve it. So I'm going to eat them. Oh, I know mm. I shouldn't. That's so bad. Oh, that's why I can't lose any weight. And my mom yeah. would go on this and that, you know, Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and that. So even though my mom never said that to me, she never said, you should be doing this. You shouldn't be eating that. I still observed her do it day Absolutely. in and day out. Day 100%. in and day out. Yes. Food was 100% for coping and rewarding when she was upset about something, I'm going to go to this. This is how we celebrate. This is ooh, something special. Let's go do something special. It's the end of the school year. Food. Yeah. Let's go out to eat. Oh, we shouldn't be having this, but we're going to have it. Oh, you had a bad day. I'm going to make you some cookies. And I'm not yeah. saying there's anything wrong with these things here and there. Right. But this was what I was being shown. And so, again, I definitely adopted those type of things about food where this is yeah. good food. This is bad food. This is, oh, I shouldn't have it. Mm. Now I really want it. Oh, I can't control myself. But this is how women are. Yeah. And I'm just always going to live in this constant battle. You know, my mom even told me in the 70s, like she took diet pills, like this and that. And yeah. Sometimes she's like, I wish I had those diet pills. Ha, ha, ha. Not funny. But I get it's what not, she was saying. Yeah. Like it was one thing that worked for her because obviously now that we know what it does to your body. You know, this is why they don't have this, but absolutely. my point is like, this was a constant battle, a constant battle. And she yeah. was verbal about it almost all the time. She was never happy with her body. She always wanted to lose weight. So, you know, that's to me, that's another different type of yeah. relationship that I was taught. So I kind of totally. had these two different But now imagine both of these relationships with food, right? Mm -hmm. being presented to you that mm -hmm. you now adopt. I mean, there is such a conflict internally. Yeah. 
Yeah. There is so much happening in you, right? That is now shaping you, defining you. And there comes a point when we end up accepting that and just saying, well, I guess this is who I am. This is just what I do. This is how I function. This is how I operate. This is how I do things. And the reason why step one or quadrant one, which is, again, identifying our root cause is so important mm -hmm. because what we're showing here and what we're, what we're doing is literally allowing you as the person to see that this stuff here that you are repeating, right? Yeah. Is not really you. Right. Like, and, and, and I want you to, to break this down and share it with you, with, with the audience in, in, in your, um, in your words, in your perspective of it, but it's not you. What does that mean? It means that this stuff that you've adopted was basically handed down to you. Right. A lot of times this stuff here that we're doing, it's not our fault. We right. didn't get to choose. No. If we wanted to have that relationship with food or not, we didn't get to choose how we learned to do with food. We didn't get to choose how to learn what choices to make with food, how right. to think of food or view food or, or have a, a connection with food. We didn't, we were literally just brought into this world and based on how you were raised and what environment you were raised and who was raising you, that's exactly what was passed down to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore we need to look at and say, and, 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 and I'll, and I'll let you go after this, but we have to look at this and understand that our relationship with food doesn't care whether you wanted to have that relationship or not. It right. didn't care, you know, what type of person you were. It didn't care what you aspired to be. It didn't care about your dreams. It didn't care about anything. It was literally just here. That is yours. And because you're growing and you're learning and you think that's what it is, we take it. Yeah. And now that becomes who we are. But what I want to share is that through this process, we get to identify and look at that. That's really not you. No. Share. Yeah, this was profound to me because when I came, I said all those things I just shared with you, like I already knew them. So I shared them with you and I'm like, well, so yeah. clearly this is why, you know, but I yeah. just, had, I had minimized it. Like I had made it like not a big deal. And again, to stress to people, like, I'm not mad at my parents for this at Good all. Point. Yeah. Like they didn't know any better. Like, yeah, exactly. They, they, it's and, not their fault. Know, no. And they always they just did the best they could. And this is what they had learned, you know? And so what right. it was passed was, down to them. Right. They learned it. So what do they do? They do the best just they can based on what down. they learned. And that's it. Yeah. That's it. Just kept yeah. passing it down. And so what happened, like, I definitely had these habits my own, my whole life, but I was always able to kind of like balance them out. And then when I got in my twenties and like before I had kids and I, you know, I had graduated and I had gotten a job. And then I think I shared this before. It was like, what do I do now? How do I value? What's my value? Like, I don't have yeah. grades. I don't have scholarships. I don't have extracurricular activities, you know, like, and I got this really good job and I'm doing pretty good at it. But this is when all of that relationship with food started to really start to come in and then become habits in terms of coping, using yeah. it as a coping mechanism. Right. So I guess I wanted to tell people like it can change. And that's yes. what that, that cause. And that's what made it tricky for me because I thought I knew, I thought I was like, okay, well, I watched my mom and dad do this. So I do it, but it wasn't that simple. It was mm -hmm. part of it, yeah. but it wasn't that simple. And I guess that's what is, I think is really important to understand is this, this root cause, like, you know, you keep saying like, go deeper, ask more questions. Like, yeah. well, then why, you know, and you really challenged me where like, I was hitting a wall there for a little while. It's like, I yeah. couldn't wait. I'm like, this is it. And you're like, this is not it. Like there's yeah. something more going on here, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I just, yeah. I just, and that's when I started to understand how that combined with some of this anxiety and depression that I had experienced, you know, which really kind of came to a head in my twenties. And then I started to use yeah. Um, my relationship with food as uh, to fill, you know, 
my, I hadn't learned any other coping mechanisms, hadn't learned right. really any other stuff. And so this was yeah. just an easy way to, and then it all became very convoluted mm -hmm. and yeah. mixed up, you know? So yeah. even though I knew I was doing it and I thought I could tell you for sure, this is the cause, this is why. I didn't really understand that, you know, because there were some other things going on that you helped me get into um, yeah. about my identity. That's right. Because what happens is not only does, do, do we start to adopt this, right? Does this now start to be how we operate and how we function? But the biggest part here then becomes what are we believing about what we are doing? What am I believing about this person that I am? What am I believing about what it is I'm doing? Because mm -hmm. that's where it then starts to become very important, because that is really where our identity is shaped, right? In our understanding, but also in the identity of what we have started to adopt. But more importantly, um, what we, um, and, and I, lost my, I lost my train of thought on that, but That's right. it's, it's really about the, the piece of your belief. That's what it was. I'm sorry, I lost the word, but it's, okay what you have started to believe about who you are, because that belief system is what is going to ultimately, it, it literally drives you. Yes. What you believe, right? What you think it's going to impact your emotions, which then is going to impact your actions. That's, that's a mm -hmm. fact, right? Mm -hmm. Scientifically proven. That's how it works. And now when we've adopted this relationship, we've created this understanding or psychology, psychology of food. We start living out this life. We now then believe. Yeah. Oh, this is just who I am. Oh, this is just what I do. Oh, this is just it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's my, my dad did that, but like, it's, it's, it, it's different for me. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's, um, um, I, I don't do that for those reasons. Right. Right. I really don't have a struggle with that. Yeah. Yeah. My dad did all that. Yeah. My dad, this other person, like we're able to recognize, okay. Yeah. I do have these certain patterns, but like that, that's not really me. Like that, that's really not going to happen to me. Right. Like I, I, I don't right. really have those issues. Right. I don't really have those struggles. Right. So we start to compartmentalize it so that we don't really have mm -hmm. to deal with the pain that it's causing us with the affliction that is causing us right with mm -hmm. the suffering that it is bringing us because that is a big problem that until we don't finally come to a realization and look at like no this is really impacting me right yeah. i i need to identify the roots like where is this really coming from yes it, it stems from all of these things that we've learned but there's also a piece of us a piece of me yeah. That is causing me to stay stuck in that. So what is it? Yeah. What is that piece that I'm not willing to acknowledge, that I'm not willing to accept, that I keep running away from because I don't want to recognize that I am struggling or that I don't want to recognize that I have a, have a difficulty, a challenge here. Why? Because then we have to do something about it. We have to take responsibility for it. Right. And that's if we hard. want it to change, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And, and, and yes, hard. it is hard. It is hard. It's because, not only hard doing it, but understanding it. Yeah, because look, this is a real thing, right? There's there's a lot of, 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 of emotions and there's a lot of shame and there could be a lot of embarrassment and there could be a yes. lot of, 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 of just ugly Disgust. involved in that. Yeah, like you're just yeah. so like ashamed and kind of disgusted with the whole thing. Cause you're like, you're making it, you're simplifying something that's not simple. That's right. And then you just get on yourself about it, you yeah. know, and then, it, and then that becomes your identity. Yes. That then becomes your identity. Now this is your relationship with food. Yeah. Now yeah. I can't control myself around it. It controls yeah. me. I feel so guilty. This is awful. I hate this. Yeah. You know, it's like this whole part of your life that you like to have in this compartment but it's not and that's where I was in my 30s like I kind of was like keeping it under wraps and I'd gain weight and I'd lose weight and I'd learn things and all of these things that I have done granted I learned some yeah. things about them but it never changed the core relationship with food and so nothing ever really changed so therefore if we didn't address that component we could never change your identity no 
Right. right? Yeah. And when we start to go through the the food behavior quadrant that I that I utilize, mm -hmm. when we get through quadrant one, that root cause, what it's now going to be able to do is address the root. We identify, oh my goodness, it is coming from here, from here, from here. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It stems from here, it stems from that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What does that do? That now tells you, look. A lot of this stuff, look, it's, it's, it's not your fault. Right. Like you yeah. learned this, you adopted it from here. You adopted it from that. You did this to protect yourself from this. You did right. this to avoid this thing. You confronted it this way with food so that you wouldn't necessarily have to deal with X, Y, and Z. Right. Right. So when we recognize that, check out the power of this. And, and please, I want you to describe then in your own words, what happens is then we are able to remove that, um, that, that, that shame and that, that belief of like, oh, this is just me. This is just yeah. who I am, right? I'm just defective. I have this problem. We remove that because now there is no more shame because we recognize, oh my gosh, it's coming from all these other areas. But now what it does is that it wipes away your identity of understanding in terms of like, no, this wasn't really you, you learned it, but it invites you and it gives you an opportunity to now choose who do you now want to be? Right. You didn't choose before. Most of this was right. just thrown at you. It became yeah. you. It was your identity. It's just who I am. But now when we release ourselves from that, now we can choose. So now what do you really want to do? Yeah. What type of life do you really want to have? Yeah. Yeah, and that is where you can that. now start to choose to start building the identity that you want, that gives you back the power of choice that now gives you the life that you truly desire. Yeah. And, 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 you know, when I first, when I first started working with you and you said all that, it was like, I was like, oh my gosh, but that's so much bigger. That's so much more. I just want to, yeah. I just want to like stop stuff in my face and uh, yeah. maybe <laughs> fit better in my pants. But really, really then what I started to realize when I would peel these layers, like an onion, you know, when you would peel yeah. these layers back and peel these layers back, and then you would deal with that. And then you would deal with that. Like it was freeing because all that exterior shell that was like, I couldn't make any progress because I kept being stuck, yeah. you know? And once I, you helped me like figure that out and, and it's different for everybody, of course. you know, and once I figured that out and you helped me figure that out, then it was like, oh, okay, no, wait a second this identity piece is also impacting this area of my life and this area of my life and that area of my life. And then once I started working on those things and going through the quadrant and some more of the other steps and recognizing, then I was able to start not only getting a control of the behavior of the emotional eating, but also some of these other behaviors that were not in line with the person that I wanted to be you know, yes. the, the anger and some of the irritability, irritability and the blaming and the, you know, even my view of myself in some of my other relationships. Yeah, totally. Like really looking at like, okay, why am I reacting that way? What is going on here? And, and that kind of stuff, you know, and that's down the road. But I think that like you were saying, like there is this freedom you know, first of all, understanding that it is a lot of it's psychological and learned and mm -hmm. it is deep in this relationship with food. But once you kind of figured this out, then all these other things kind of start to come into play, you know? Yeah. So because I finally focused on this aspect, this psychological aspect, this relationship with food and really got down to the core of it, then those other things you know, kind of then my mind was free yes. to then focus on some of the other areas of nutrition that I needed to do some work on and the move. Right. That's and, right. And, you know, so it's not just like magic wand. Oh, you figure this out. And like <laughs> things just fall off of you. Of course. You still right, have to right. do the work. Yeah. But I could actually learn it and acknowledge it because I wasn't all mixed up with myself and all these other things. That's right. And it was no longer unrealistic because you were becoming that person. And therefore, yeah. all the things that now fall in line with who that person is, yeah, is like doable. 
right? Yeah. Then when we start to change, when we focus on changing your identity, then we can go on to, okay, so now how do I start adopting a healthier relationship with food? How do I then start to change my eating habits? Oh, okay. It's about this. It's, we do it this way. We do it that way. And yeah. it's so much easier to do it that way because you have now started to change you, the person where everything stems from. Yes. Yes, your 100%. psychological understanding, right? Your psychology of food and how you relate with it stemming from your relationship with food. Yeah. And isn't it, isn't it funny how food has the power to impact every area of your life? Right. And I did not realize that. Like I yeah. knew that I, this was a habit and an action that I didn't want to be doing anymore, but I didn't realize the power the, the real power. And, and, and unfortunately, I think it is hard for people yeah. to, to understand that, like they know they're doing this and they know that ultimately this probably is causing the health issues, the weight gain, mm -hmm. the, you know, ABC, but you don't realize because it's so closely linked to your identity piece, how yeah. that actually is indirectly affecting all these other areas of your life. And I guess that's one thing that I really keep telling people like, yeah. this isn't just about, you know, yeah, those are happy side effects that are happening. You know, I am losing weight. My clothes are fitting better. My skin is looking better. I have energy. I don't want to sleep all day. You know, like I move more. I enjoy just different things in a different way. Like I'm not as irritable. I'm not as angry. Like yeah, yeah. I'm, all those other areas of my life are improving, you know, and but they weren't even necessarily what I was wanting to focus <laughs> on in the first place. Yeah. 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 So that's why it's so powerful. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's exciting because it's something that isn't impossible to sustain like many things out there, right? Why are these things impossible to sustain long term? One, because they're unrealistic with the expectations that they that they demand right? Mm -hmm. The demand is too, is too high. It's impossible yeah. to sustain. Yeah. Right. But secondly, it's not emphasizing the core component. The only thing that all of these things out there have in common, right? Whether it's what, what I teach and diets and supplements and all, all of the, the core component that has that one thing that's in common is you. Yeah. But they're not addressing how to change or how to better you. No. They're not focusing on the fundamental component that encumbrances everything about what is going on in your life, which is you. Right. Yeah. And when we work on self, when we identify and we start really focusing on the root of the issue that is causing me to be in this life that I am unhelped and unhappy with, whether that is because you're overweight, you're underweight, you are unhealthy, you have no energy, you're physically limited, you have restrictions, you just don't like the way you look, you're not confident in how you feel, you don't like the way you look in, in the mirror, you don't like the way your clothes fits, whatever it is, if we do not address the root that is causing you to be in that place in that life, the change is not going to be long-term. We cannot achieve long-term change or long-term transformation. So I'm so happy that we were able to break this down today. I'm so happy that we um, had an opportunity to discuss this, Allison. Um, I'm happy that um, we're able to, to, to connect. It looks like we lost you there, but you're back on. Yeah, you're muted. Um, but I was just saying... Yeah, I like I like I like it just went goodbye. <laughs> I said, oh, wait a minute. I'm back. We're not done yet. Yeah, I'm back. yeah, she's back. She's back. And I was just saying, I'm so happy that we were able to have this this discussion and this conversation because um, look, this is my heart cry, right? Yeah. Like I shared my heart cry with you when we had our initial um uh assessment uh, assessment call, consultation yeah. call. Like this is my heart cry that people can really understand this because when we understand this, this changes everything because it impacts everything about you and it changes you as the person and now yes. can be able to be a sustainable, 
right? Lifestyle versus something that is just extremely hard to obtain and do for the yeah. rest of my life. Yeah, right? I can't agree. I, I, yeah, I agree with you 100%. And I did, that's kind of like, I feel like I, I, my, I want to join you, you know, and that's why I'm kind of doing this because yeah. I feel like this has made such a profound impact in my life and it makes so much sense yeah. to me now that I'm in it and that I'm doing yeah. it you know, that I want to just share this with people. And I want people to be able to like, get to you, you know, and, and I think that, that this is a way that people can listen and they can relate, but they can learn things. Um, Because like you said, this is not being stressed, you know, and it's just starting to come out here and there, like with, um, that new program, you know, and and I did do that. That is something I did. And it, it was refreshing because there was some little bit of, you know, the psychological aspect of it and how these things are learned and whatnot. But clearly that was just kind of scratching the surface. Yeah. Um, but I will say like, this is why people don't know, they don't know this, they don't understand it. And so I, I thank you for kind of, you know, taking the time to explain some of this um, yeah. in ways that people, even though they haven't experienced it yet, they can start to understand. Totally, totally. And I'm excited because the next coming weeks, I really want to continue on this topic and continue to break down kind of like in depth, right, as much as we can the four quadrants, but really having this dialogue so people can really see what the process is like, right, or at least through your eyes, what it was like for you, what you went through, what you experienced, because look, my heart cry again is to bring value that can impact your life so that you can learn how to take control of your life, your health, and live the life that you desire, but fully, not just temporary, not just sometimes like literally just fully to the max, to the best, like lifestyle forever. Because when I can impact that, then I know we can start to make a dent. How? Because now you're going to be able to teach those around you those kids that are around you are now going to be able to learn a better way, a different way, a healthy way to deal and relate with food so that they can adopt their own incredible healthy relationship with Mm -hmm. food, but also their psychology of food is going to be in a healthy way, which can then now start to make a dent in this epidemic that now has tripled right? It has tripled. The obesity rate has tripled in America. That means, and this was even back in uh, several years ago when they did this evaluation, but now it's one in every three Americans is dealing with some level of obesity. And they're saying that in kids, it's one in every two. It's insane. Allow that to sink in for a moment. Like, yes. look, it, I said when I started these episodes that I was going to be raw and that I was going to be real. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to share my heart cry and my passion. And these are things that just are, are extremely important for me. Yeah, I agree. That we've got to really look in, look into and grasp and really start to do as much as we can Mm-hmm. to impact that and to bring some type of change. And how can we do it? We know the, we know the way by starting with us, like how you did now. I am so blessed because now I impacted you. You are impacting now yes. your two kids, yes, Nick and your beautiful young daughter, yes. Chris, right? Yes. You're, you're sh- sharing this information with your, with your mom, right? Yes. Who's in her seventies or, or yeah. Yes. In her seventies, right. Yes. That at least we can, uh, with the rest of the years that she has left, yes. we can at least have her live the best years that she has right. left. Right. Yes. And yes. then your community and your friends, like, look, one, one person right. by you focusing on you. Right. Yeah. And that is why we are here. And I'm just so grateful. I, I, I wouldn't want any other person joining me on this journey and Thank as, we, so as we go sure. out to, to make a dent and help more yeah. people one, and thanks for one day and one episode at a time. No, it's an That's honor. That's right. I love it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very cool. So that was today's episode. I'm so happy you tuned in to us. Um, we are, again, so just blessed and grateful to be on uh, with you all. Remember, every Tuesday, we're coming on here, Facebook Live. If you want information on how you can join in, look, you'll have the information there in the show notes in the description. Go ahead and click on that. Join in with us because, look, again, our heart cry and our passion is to bring insight that will change your health, your life, your, your, your longevity of life, the way you live, and everything in between so that you can live the life that you desire. So as we close, any, um, let's like, I always like to close any final thoughts on today's episode. Hmm. And do you want to share the audience, share with the audience? You know, I think, um, I, I think I just want to tell people that even if they feel like, oh, I, I kind of can't relate to this. I don't, I don't do this. You know, I, I don't really have that relationship with food. Like, that's not really something in my life that I feel like I'm struggling with. Yeah. I, um, in terms of having emotional eating, you know, problems, yeah. I want to just say that this relationship with food, even though if it's not causing you to do those particular habits, like I challenge you to still kind of look at this yeah. um, because I found that once we got into more parts of the quadrant, understanding some of the stuff that I haven't even shared about the cause and about view of self and identity yeah. that related to the triggers, that related to the reactions and the behaviors, um, those were affecting now other areas of my life too. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, the strong emotions, like the strong emotional reactions, you know, like why am I feeling angry? Why am I yelling? So like, yeah. if you want to look at it as behavior, like not just emotional eating, but arguing, yelling, yeah, you know, like, like challenging, like confronting just, just yeah. different things like that. Like some of that type of relational um, behavioral type of stuff too. Like this is applicable to those things. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Good point. Good point. 100%. 100%. Well said. I agree. And look, I just want to remind you that you are incredible. Look, um, many times we can, we can uh, allow our past or our failures or our attempts, right, that we have not yet achieved to start to dictate who we are, what we can do, what we're made for, what we're made to become. And I just want to say that's not true, right? You're not defined by your past. You're not defined by the things you haven't achieved yet. You're not defined by your failures. You're not defined by the mistakes that you've made. You're not defined by the unpleasant or things that you are not happy with. You're not defined by that. There's potential inside of you. And the only thing that we can do is learn from these experiences and understand that each day that we are on earth, it is a new opportunity. And that as we desire to become better and we work on becoming better 1% at a time, look, there's nothing we cannot achieve. And I hope to be of a support for you and encourage you that if you are in that place, that we can walk that life together that we can do life together, that we can join hands together, so to speak, through, through, mm -hmm. um, through, through this broadcasting or through these, these, these means of communication so that we can support each other and that you can ultimately get to the life that you desire. Why? Because you're worth it. You're worth it. Great. Your life is beyond valuable. There is no price that can, that can describe your worth and you are worthy of living the life that you desire if you choose to not give up and keep striving. So I love you. We love you. Allison, I love you. You're an incredible yes, love you. joy in my life and amazing friend now. And I'm just happy yeah, to um, me too. keep growing and developing with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope we hope to see you next Tuesday here on the same channel here on uh, Facebook live. Have a fantastic evening and uh, take care. Allison, have a blessed night, girl. We'll talk hey, soon. Good night, everybody. All talk right. soon. Good night. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. Welcome back. And what an awesome episode. I absolutely love this topic. And I love discussing in depth about the psychological side of things. Because as I expressed through today's episode, um, everything about what it is we're doing 
is linked to our psychological understanding of it, our psychological formation of it, the psychological uh, um, um, uh, uh, structure of what we do based on how we learn to do it and how we developed it throughout our life. And I, I really think that when we grasp this understanding, I don't know what your ultimate health and fitness goal is or what your ultimate life goal is, but what I do know is that when we get a hold of this psychological understanding piece, it impacts so much. It impacts powerfully. Like it, it really takes us from living a okay life, kind of understanding things and seeing some results to really just flying and excelling in all aspects of our life. Because the beauty of health is that it's one of the very few areas that I firmly believe that it impacts everything about us. It impacts every area of our life. Without health, we're, we can't be our best. Without health, we can't love others fully. We can't perform at the highest level. We, we can't give the best that we'd like to give. And so I just really, really want to continue to bring this topic to you all and break down right the psychological piece so that we can now start grasping and taking control of our habits of our unhealthy eating habits to master them to take control of our emotions to really put an end to things that we've been doing for years that maybe we're not proud of that maybe we're not happy with that maybe we're not satisfied with because look at the end of the day it's got to be important for us to be our best and the only one that can desire that is you And so just know that each episode, it's an invitation for you to take the information, look within, explore it, and see what can I get out of this? How can I implement something? How can I even go deeper within me to identify the root cause? And next week as we start tapping into, well, how do I, how do I start identifying even certain triggers? And we're going to go really in, in depth with Allison in terms of the identity piece right? She mentioned it in terms of the identity piece of who she was prior to us doing this work and who she now started to identify with as we, excuse me, consistently pursued the work of becoming the best version of herself. So thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you haven't already subscribed, look, I invite you to subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. You can do that on YouTube by clicking the subscribe link or click the bell. Also click the bell rather so you can get notifications of our up and coming episodes. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast station, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Thank you for um, sending in your suggestions, your questions. But if you are listening to us on your favorite podcast station, click the follow button so that you don't miss an episode. Once again, my friends, I am blessed to have you in my life. I am blessed to have you in my community. And I would love to connect with you. If we have not connected, if we have not had a conversation, or if we do not know each other, Let's wait no more. Let's connect. Shoot me a email if you have any questions about anything related to you or to our episodes. You can send that to listen not defeated at gmail.com. Listen not defeated at gmail.com. You'll find that there at the bottom. And also, if you haven't connected on social media, let's do that. You can visit me on all social media platforms under my handle at Dave K Hernandez at Dave K. Hernandez. You'll find it there at the bottom. And if you want to connect and have a more intimate connection, right, and just have a conversation, or if you want to know more about me, more about what it is I do, how I help people, go to my website. That's www.davidhernandez.co. That's davidhernandez.co. You'll find it there at the bottom. And keep tuning in every week because I want to keep blessing your life. And more importantly, look, share this information with someone. If you know somebody that can benefit from this, share the channel, share the podcast station or, 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 or our podcast rather with them. I want to continue to bless others and we can do it together by sharing this information. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Listen, You're Not Defeated and I'm your host, David Hernandez. And as always, I want to remind you, go out, be the best version of yourself. You are incredible. And remember, you are not defeated. Go out, crush it, live your best life, and I will see you on your next episode. Take care, y'all. Peace.